do have a discussion Bible study session immediately following worship this morning from 11.30 to 12.30 in Memorial Hall each week through this uh, series. And if you can't make it today, we also have opportunities to discuss and study deeper on Wednesdays, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and again at 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Pick one that's convenient for you and come on over to really dig into Paul's letter of Ephesians. Great, great letter uh, made to circulate through a bunch of churches in the region. The church is the body of Christ. And as such, it's got an identity. We've got an identity. We've got a mission. We've got a purpose. Not just the body generally, all Christians, but the body specific to each individual church. And so Ephesians is revealing to us not only what God has planned for the body of Christ in general, but what God has planned for the St. Andrew United Methodist Church. So join us on this journey as we continue. Our scripture this week uh, is the second chapter of Ephesians, verses 1 through 11. And it goes like this. You were dead through your trespasses and your sins in which you once lived following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of our flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in this age and the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Notice how this scripture starts off. You were dead through your trespasses and your sins. Starts off on kind of a low note, to say the least. Well, in following the scriptures, I'm going to start off on a low note as well. What does the two words, doomsday clock, mean to us all out here? You know what the doomsday clock is? The doomsday clock is that symbol created in 1947 by uh, the Chicago scientists published in the, uh, what was it called, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists beginning in 1947, the likelihood that the human community would destroy itself through nuclear war. And since 1947, it has been a gauge of how the human community is in fits and starts being tempted by not just the risk of nuclear war, but other unsavory things about the human condition, trends in politics environmental degradation, culture and society, terrorism, rogue nations. Over the years, the doomsday clock has incorporated these dangerous aspects of our human community and the things that drive them, the greed, the will to power, the fear, and created this symbol. Does anyone know Oh, by the way, when the clock strikes midnight, game over. <laughs> Do you, does anybody know how many minutes to midnight we currently are in 2017? 
Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. The only other time it's been closer than this was in 1953, when it was two minutes to midnight under the real threat of, of global nuclear war. So, you know, I mentioned the doomsday clock because it's a symbol, but it represents a very real thing, the capacity for humankind to destroy ourselves in fits of short-sighted, selfish greed, conflict, injustice, and reckless will to power. It's a symbol, and it's not just true for the human community, it's also personally and individually true. Each one of us has our own doomsday clock ticking in ourselves and in our lives. If you haven't seen it, you haven't been looking. Constant struggle with sin. By the way, sin is addiction to self-centeredness. That temptation that we seize to put ourselves in the place of power in our lives rather than God who is supposed to sit and rule over us. When we rule over ourselves, all kinds of Terrible things happen to us and to those around us. We struggle with greed, with other kinds of addictions. Anyone who's ever seen somebody addicted to a substance can see that the ruling of ourselves can lead to very dangerous and destructive behaviors. Every one of us knows the struggle not to be short-sighted, not to be selfish, not to be greedy, Every one of us knows the real and very present prospect of being our own worst enemy. Now, some of you may be saying, I'm getting out of here. This is just too down for me today. Here's good news. This scripture is really, really good news. Paul starts off with this passage. Yeah, it's a downer. You were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once lived following the course of this world, following the rulers of the powers of the air, the spirit that is now at work in those who are disobedient. Paul setting the stage for a very real, very present reality that humankind and each individual person is dead in their trespasses and their sins. We are a doomsday people. In a doomsday world, following a doomsday ruler, I promise it's going to get better. It's going to get better. You know, this phrase, following the ruler of the power of the air, in the mythologies of the day, there was lots of elemental gods, fire, earth, water, air. They were lesser, they were middle managers in the grand scheme of gods and heroes. The hero, the ruler of the Tower of the Air is for Paul and his audience who are listening. One of those lesser powers. And it's like that in our world today, right? There are lesser powers vying for our allegiance and our loyalty. A middle level ruler, this world is, over us. It's powerful for sure, because this world tries to promise us fame, and fortune, and pleasure, comfort, safety, and security, but it can't deliver. And when we follow this lesser lord, this lesser ruler, we fall straight into the doomsday temptation of the path of sin and death. This world has a doomsday clock. And if we follow this lesser God, this lesser ruler, this lesser Lord, which is the world, it leads to sin and to death. Now we start getting to the good news. God sees this. Sin upon sin. Death upon death, doomsday clock ticking off to midnight and just can't leave us to our own blindness and our own darkness. God's love shines through with grace and mercy. Paul says, but God who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, 
made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And in this we see that the doomsday clock, the one that's casting a shadow over this world and ticking off the minutes to midnight, and the one that's in each and every one of us, ticking off the minutes into our own personal midnight, can only cast a shadow down the pathway of this world of sin and death. It cannot cast a shadow down the path of life and light in Christ. For grace you have been saved, Paul says it twice, through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is a gift from God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. By grace you have been saved, a gift. We were already down the pathway of sin and death. The door was already locked, the clock ticking in only one direction. Then, in Christ, a new path opened. And we are saved. Saved by faith. Saved by taking ourselves and pledging our loyalty and our love to the God of all creation by following. <coughs> Not following ourselves into sin and death. Not following the lesser ruler, which is this world into the shadow of the doomsday clock, but a new life where the clock doesn't cast a shadow, where it never ticks any closer. Saved by faith. Turning away from that all too tempting path of sin and death. Once we step onto that path, we live in grace and light. Paul goes on, and this ends the scripture. We are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Good works. Works that stand in such stark contrast to greed and conflict and violence and fear and the will to power, just as dark as those things are, good works of light and light, of mercy and of grace, of justice and compassion. Created to be our way of life. We individually and we together as the church must live in such a way that we shine light and draw people from the dark path of sin and death, from out under the shadow of the doomsday clock. That's what we're made for. That very same grace that has saved us is there to save all people. We are best positioned to do that work because we are the ones who have already seen and already experienced that mercy and that grace. We have already placed that faith in God and Christ and have opened to us new life where that doomsday clock no longer ticks. We, who are in the St. Andrew United Methodist Church, have a very real and present responsibility and mission to be that light, to reflect that grace to all that we need. Each week we're working on a question that kind of sets us thinking about the mission and vision of the St. Andrew United Methodist Church. And the question this week is, once you were all dead, once I was dead in my trespasses and sins, but we found Christ and we found faith. Many of us may have found it here. I certainly did. What is 
this church doing to be that light for those people still walking in darkness all around us? What are we currently doing that's proclaiming by grace you have been saved through faith? We are people of faith. We have a great and wonderful mission. And we should always remember that it has been a free gift from God. And we get to take that gift and reflect it to others. Let's pray. God, may your presence and your spirit be strong with we who are your people. Help us grow in your light and your grace and your mercy. Don't let us be discouraged or fearful. Don't let us be tempted to follow lesser rulers in a lesser light. Free us for our first best mission to receive your love and salvation to reflect it to those who are still on the path to sin and death. Be with us here and from here to wherever we go. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.